lot of things you need to do before you ride. Here are today's top 10 tips. Whether it's the first ride of the season or you're out riding every week, you know you should go through a pre-ride checklist every time your bike hits the highway. Here's our top 10 list of things you can do and should do regularly to make sure your ride is safe and enjoyable. All you need are some hand tools, basic mechanical ability, and a little bit of time on your day off. You can tailor this list to meet your own riding profile. Number one, check the fluids. Start with the engine oil. If it's been a while since you've been riding, start the engine and let it run for at least five minutes. Fast idle is best around 1500 RPM. This allows the oil pump to return any oil to the tank that may have seeped past the check ball in the pump. And it allows the oil to warm up slightly, giving you a more accurate check. Oil expands with heat, and your oil level will rise as the bike warms up. Check the oil in the correct position with the bike on the side stand or upright as recommended by the factory. Next, top off the crankcase and transmission levels with the right grade of lubricant. Periodically also check and top off the fork and brake fluids. If your scooter has a wet clutch, check the primary oil level. Number two. The battery. While you're checking fluids, don't forget the battery. New Harleys use a sealed battery, but older bikes still need your attention. Remove the battery for a thorough inspection, checking for corrosion at the terminals and cracks for leakage around the case. If your bike has been stored over winter, are you sure it did not freeze? Even a properly charged battery can freeze if it gets cold enough, and if it does, you might as well toss it. Check your cables at both ends, making sure the connections are clean and tight and that nothing's loose or corroded where the cable crimps onto the connecting hardware. Make sure the vent hose isn't cut, pinched, or plugged. Verify that it's routed correctly, away from the chains, belts, and exhaust pipes. The end should hang down about one to two inches below the frame of the bike. Finally, check the fluid in each cell. This is easy to do since most batteries have a translucent case, but you might need to shine a flashlight through the case to see the level clearly. Number three, chains and belts. Check the rear drive belt or chain. As chains and sprockets wear, they develop tight and loose spots. Find the tight spot in your chain before you check it. If you adjust it in a loose spot, it may bind when it rolls around to the tight spot. To check for excessive wear, push up with one hand on the lower section of the chain, removing all slack. Then with your other hand, grab the chain halfway up the back side of the sprocket by the side plates. Try to pull the chain away from the sprocket teeth. If it pulls away by more than half the diameter of the roller, you should replace the chain, the rear drive, sprocket, and the transmission counter sprocket as a complete set. Installing a new chain on worn sprockets will cause the chain to wear prematurely. Lube your chain, but ride the bike a few miles first. This allows the chain to warm up and expand, permitting the lubricant to reach the critical parts inside the rollers. For belts, make sure the tension is correct for your model, then inspect the belt for rocks and tooth separation. Have a friend roll the bike slowly as you watch for foreign objects embedded in the belt. If your bike has high miles or you live in a dusty, sandy climate, be sure to check the rear sprocket. There should be no noticeable wear in the teeth. Use your finger to feel for worn sprocket teeth and if you find any, replace the sprocket. Worn sprockets are the main cause of belt failure. Don't just look at the belt or chain. If you see wear on a newer belt or chain, you might have a worn pulley or sprocket. That can cause premature wear. J&P Tech suggests installing a new sprocket for every two chains. If you have a swing arm model and want to check the final drive, you'll need the weight of at least one rider on the bike. Most importantly, check your service manual for the proper specs. Number four, your tires. Take a close look at the tires. Check the tread for nails or screws. Enlist the aid of a buddy to roll the bike as you inspect the tire tread. The tire's tread should have at least 3 30 seconds of an inch depth at the thinnest part. Most tires have safety bars incorporated into the tread pattern. As the tire wears down, the safety bar will cause the tread pattern to appear smooth all the way across in a swath about 2 inches wide. 
Besides checking the usual tread wear and sidewall cracking, make sure you check your service manual for the proper air pressure and wear limits. And did you install anything new that might affect clearance? It may look right just sitting there, but have someone check when the bike is loaded with you, your passenger, and your luggage. Number five, filters. If it's been a while since your bike has had any major service, it may be a good idea to inspect the air filter. Remove the cover and filter element. For foam or K&N type filters, remove the element from the screen, wash it out with hot, soapy water, and blot it dry. Then apply the correct filter oil. Don't overdo it. Too much oil is as bad as none. If you have a paper filter and it's dirty or contaminated with oil or water, replace it. You cannot clean a paper filter. Number six, cables. Check your throttle and clutch cables adjustment. Excess slack can cause riding problems or contribute to an accident. While you're at it, lube the cables. Dry cables increase effort and are the number one cause of failure. The best way to pressure lube cables is with a good quality cable lubricant and a cable lubing tool. The type that clamps over and seals the end of the cable housing while allowing the cable itself to pass through. When actuated, the entire cable housing can be filled with a lubricant. Use a lightweight lubricant like a 3-in-1. If you want to make this super easy, check out JMP's Champion's Choice Cable Care Kit. For a nominal fee, you can get the lube and adapters to help get the lube into the cables with no mess. Also check to make sure your throttle cables return to the idle position cleanly and quickly. Number seven, lights and turn signals. Check the operation of headlights, taillights, brake lights, and turn signals. Don't forget the little things like speedometer lights and high beam indicator light. Sure, you can do a lot of riding without them, but why risk the ticket just because a light or a turn signal was burned out? If the bulb is okay, but you still get no light, most likely you've got a faulty ground. Check it out. Number eight, brakes. Take a few minutes to inspect brake lines and pads along with brake fluid levels. Make sure the lines show no evidence of cracking or leaks at fittings or junctions. Brake pads should never have less than one eighth inch of material on either pad. Then look at the disc. If it shows heavy grooving, scoring, or cracks, replace it along with a fresh set of pads. When checking the brake fluid levels, be sure to clean around the reservoir cap before removing it to prevent contamination. Use the correct fluid for your application. All Harleys, 1977 and newer, plus older models that have been up updated, require DOT-5 fluid. Remember, brakes are your main line of defense. Number nine, nuts and bolts. Nuts and bolts are the most neglected area of maintenance. Depending on what your ride is and how you ride, you may never have problems with fasteners coming loose. On the other hand, if you have something like an old shovel head or pan head, the ever-present bottle of Loctite torque wrench become a weekly ritual. Pay close attention to front and rear motor mounts, top motor mount, especially on soft hails or older four speeds. Exhaust system and shock absorber mounts, gas tank, fenders, belt, chain guards, and mirrors. You'll find the proper torque specs in your service manual. Number 10, wheel spokes. Check for loose spokes. Put the bike on a lift and rotate the wheel using an appropriate spoke wrench. This is also a good time to inspect the rim for excess runout. If you're really a techie, mount a dial indicator on the bike close to the rim. Otherwise, use a pointer, such as an old coat hanger anchored to something solid on the frame, swing arm, or front end. Tighten only the loosest spokes, no more than a quarter turn per adjustment. If you're not familiar with this type of procedure, you might want to ask an experienced buddy for help or periodically have it done by a professional as it is easy to get a rim extremely out of true. Over tightening spokes will cause unwanted offset in the wheel, not to mention creating a bind on other spokes. When new, they find their sweet spot as the spoke ends and nipples seat into the hub and rim, allowing spokes to loosen. 
After the break-in and a good spoke tightening and truing process, they continue to stretch, so the spoke tightening and truing should be done yearly or every 10,000 miles. One last note before you ride. Are your license and safety stickers up to date? You've got better things to spend your money on than a ticket.